Hello everybody, this is Stonewall, and today we're going to look a little bit at World of Tanks. So this is a game I've been playing quite a lot lately, um, and they recently did an update that added a new country and a couple new lines of tanks. So let's look, let's just get a feel for what the game is like. So we look at the tech tree, and it can be a little bit overwhelming at first whenever you scroll through here. Um, but each country has their own tech tree, and each of these tanks are real tanks. So you can look at these and read a little bit of history about these. So the T1 Cunningham is the Tier 1 American tank. And uh, so the dates in here is 1928. So, for instance, the American line spans this one from 1928 all the way over, let's just pick this one, the M48 Patton, to being developed or an entering service in 1953 and having 11,700 vehicles produced between 1952 and 1959. So this saw quite a bit of action, probably Korea, and I'm not sure, um, it would probably still have been in use uh, through the Vietnam era possibly. Um, but I'm not sure how much action it saw. So that's kind of the date range for most of these tanks. Some of them just shortly after World War I ended. Well, I guess that was about 10 years after World War I ended. Um, <clears throat> all the way up to 10 years after World War II. So quite a range through here. They're sorted by tier um, and in general, each tier up has better armor, possibly, <laughs> some of them get worse, um, better guns, higher hit points, um, and a lot of times do more damage per shot. Now there are some variations, for instance, you can go from a tank that will fire one shot that does quite a bit of damage but it takes a long time to reload. And then from there you can go to a tank that'll fire one shot that does a lot less damage, but you can fire a lot faster. So there's always some type of balance with each one. Um, so this is the American tanks. So right now I'm working on the Panzer, f or not the Panzer, <laughs> this is the American tanks. The Sherman M4A3E8, or the EZ8 is kind of the nickname. Uh, the E2 is the jumbo so the difference between these two and you can see you can get to both of them from the M4 um, which is just the plain Sherman uh, the E2 is called the jumbo and it has much higher armor but a lot lower mobility so it's not near as fast but it can it'll be harder to penetrate the armor on it this one's a lot faster and can move around a lot easier change positions the other line I've worked on in the American side is the light tanks. So I'm on the T-37, which is a tier 6 light tank, and I'm working towards the M-41 Bulldog. So the German tanks, I have worked a little bit in the German tanks. I don't have anything really high tier, um, but as you can see, there are a lot of German tanks. Um, everything from the artillery, tank destroyers, light tanks, mediums, heavies, everything. So I guess I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself in this. So let's look at these symbols for a second. The square denotes artillery or SPG which stands for self-propelled gun. Uh, the triangle is tank destroyer and in general their turrets do not turn all the way but they have really good guns, generally really good armor. Um, and good penetration on the rounds that they shoot. Um, then you have this little diamond, which is a light tank. A basically a diamond with two bars, which is a medium, and then the three bars means a heavy. So if I just mouse over something and say, you know, one of those types, you can kind of look at the symbol and tell what that is. Um, but anyways, I'm on the tier four. German tank destroyer and I've actually researched the tier 5 I just haven't bought it yet 
So to research, you have to earn XP in battles. That's the number next to the little silver star. And then this stack of silver here corresponds with this, and that's the number of credits you have. Um, the other thing I've got is the tier 4 light tank that leads into a medium line and from there into heavies and you could here branch off to a tank destroyer if you wanted to. Uh, the other thing I've got a tier 3 light tank down here that leads down a light line that goes to mediums at tier 9 and 10 um, or technically 8, 9, and 10 because it branches off here. Next is Russian. Um, I've done some with their heavy tanks, and I'm working towards their medium tanks, going this way along the line. Um, British, I've gone further than any of the others, but only on one line, and that is their medium line. So, it's light tanks up to tier 5, and then after that, it goes to medium tanks. And I'm on the tier 7 Comet. Um, the other line I've worked on a little bit is the tank destroyers. I'm on tier 4 there. <clears throat> French have done a little bit, kind of a mixture across here. I've, I played with that tier 3 medium just enough to unlock that one, but I didn't buy it. Partly because you have limited space in your garage. You can only own a certain number of vehicles at a time, unless you want to spend gold, which costs real money to buy. Um, so then I'm on tier 4 light tank here and tier 4 artillery um, then the Czechoslovakian line or the Czech line I'm on tier 5 and there's not many tanks on this line that's part of the reason I wanted to play it because it would be really easy to go all the way down the line on this one it's just a straight line there's no choices between where to go it doesn't branch off any it's just a straight line alright so here's the Japanese Again, this is not a big group, especially compared to American, German, British, and Russian, uh, and I guess French as well. There's only a couple lines here, and it only goes down to two lines in the end. And I've gone down the two main ones, so the heavies, and I've researched it, but I haven't bought it, again, because of garage space. Same with the light to medium line. Next up is the Chinese, and I've only played a couple battles in these, and again, probably got rid of them due to garage slots. And then the brand new Swedish line. This was just added uh, today, actually. I'm recording this on Wednesday, just for reference. Um, and they recently added update 9.17 in World of Tanks, and they added the Swedish tanks. So if we look at my garage... I can look at all of these tanks that I still own um, and all of that. Let's look at a few statistics on tanks. So for instance this tier 4 German tank destroyer. As you can see it doesn't have a full turret. This only has about maybe 15 degrees side to side um, and actually here 5 degrees one direction, 15 the other. So it turns just a little bit more one direction than the other. And as you can see, it's offset to the side. So if you look on this list over here, this is just some stats. So this is firepower. This is all based on the gun and the ammunition. So standard shell damage is between 83 and 138 on the gun that I've got on it right now. Um, and there are several options whenever you do research. So here I've got a 7.5 centimeter or a 75 millimeter gun with a fire rate of 15.4 rounds per minute and the numbers down below that give average penetration, average damage, average damage per minute and that would be if you were firing at your full rate and hitting every shot. Uh, dispersion is your accuracy so there is an aiming circle that your shot will land in and how tight that get it how tight that gets is your dispersion aiming time is how long it takes for that circle to get to its smallest so in comparison this fires high explosive rounds this is a 105 millimeter basically a howitzer of some form uh, which a a much lower fire rate much lower penetration but much higher damage um, and a lot less accurate so it's always a trade-off whenever you're looking at the guns the next thing is hit points 270 hit points 
at tier four. Um, so for a comparison, the highest hit point tank in the game is a little bit over 3,000 at tier 10. So as you go up in tiers, hit points go up, also damage per shot goes up in general. So this has interesting armor. So this is the way most tank destroyers are. Front hull armor is 60 millimeters. Now, it's 60 millimeters, but it's also very sloped. So if they don't hit it, if they hit it exactly straight on, exactly perpendicular to the surface, that's 60 millimeters. But in reality, this is probably closer to 80 or 90 uh, effective armor. The problem is if they get beside you, you only have 20 millimeters on the side and 8 in the rear. So this is a tier 4 tank. Let's look at my tier 4 light tank. For instance, this has penetration of... 50.3 to 83.8 millimeters at 100 meters. Um, based on the effective armor of the front, it's not likely to penetrate. If you get a really good shot from above or something like that, you possibly could. Uh, but the sides and back, definitely every shot. So then you've got specific power, which is a rating that compares uh, horsepower to weight. It's a kind of a power to weight ratio. Um, then you've got top speed forwards is 42 kilometers per hour. Reverse is 11 kilometers per hour. Traverse speed is the number of degrees, I guess that would be per second, that uh, your tank can turn. And that's based on your tracks and overall maneuverability. Concealment is how hard it is for enemy to for enemies to spot you. The higher the number, the better. So if it's sitting still, it's a whole lot better than if it's moving. Um, and then the small number here is if you pull the trigger. So you can be completely hidden, but you shoot and you give away your position. So you've got to figure out exactly the best way to position yourself. Um, so that's kind of a little overview some of the details. Now there's other things whenever you look at your crew. Um, let's find... Oh, let's go with my T-50. This has a pretty low trained crew. Uh, only 59%. These guys get a little bit of a bonus from the commander based on how well trained he is. Um, but if we look up here, every red number could be better if I had a 100% trained crew. So for instance, my reload time is 2.5 seconds, but if my guys were 100% trained, it would actually be 1.9 seconds. Rate of fire would go up, wow, 5.54 rounds per minute, which means average damage per minute would go up, uh, about 300 damage per minute so it can make a big difference as to how well trained your crew is so even if I don't continue down the Swedish line if I decide to sell this tank I'm keeping the crew because it is 100% trained you can move crews from tank to tank um, but they do get a little bit of a penalty and still have to train some to get back up to 100% but it's better than if you get a stock crew at like 50% so I'm going to jump into a quick battle and show you what this is like. Alright, so as you can see here, this is a list of all the tanks. There are only three tanks in here that are not this Swedish tier 1 tank. And that is a German, a Japanese, and a, another German on the enemy team. Um, so, yeah, but it's mainly because this just came out today and a lot of people are trying to play through these tanks right? so this map is called mines um, and well I'll show you a little bit you can see the mini map in the bottom right the green circle is how close I have to be to somebody in order to spot their tank uh, the white circle can't remember exactly what that is the yellow circle is how far away I can see somebody if somebody else spotted them. 
Um, and this is a kind of small map. There are some much larger maps in the game. Um, so let's see if we can get a decent position. This is kind of a slow climb here. But as you can see, bottom left, my top speed is only 25 kilometers per hour. Now, this tank, you would almost be better off to, uh, oh yes, ah, teammate killed him. There we go, I got a kill. You would almost be better off in this tank to back out of cover. I just bounced a shot from over there. Oh, that one penetrated. Oh, come on. He's got a good line of sight. That tank is very slow. He was probably on the island across the water near that lighthouse. So let's keep watching this match a little bit and see what happens. So right now, you can see the top. We are four to two, and that's the number of kills. Now what I was saying as I was getting killed is it because of how far back on the tank the turret is set, you'd be about better to back out of cover instead of put your nose first because they'll be able to get off one or two shots into your side before your turret will actually be able to shoot at them. Mm. This guy was trying to use cover of the rocks and shoot between them, but didn't do it very well. So it's seven to six. Let's see if we can find somebody else to watch here. He's hammering that guy, and where's he getting hit from? Light tractor over there. Alright, nice. They got him. Or Atsu did. Okay, so there are five of them left. Actually, four now. Alright, so one showed up all the way down near our base. Let's see if I can find somebody. Yeah, this guy's near our base. And he's... Oh, I missed. There you go. Nice. <coughs> Excuse me. So these guys took the path around the island to come down towards our base and try to come in behind the guys that were on the hill. Um, and if you see on the map, the mini map, there's a light red mark out there on the island. That is the last known location of that tank. So the problem with that is, especially higher tiers and light tanks and things, somebody could be in a completely different place and not have been spotted to get there. So you start searching in that location, but they're in a completely different area of the map. But it's not very likely that this guy snuck past anywhere. So there he is. Let's see if we can find a better view of this fight. So is he? <laughs> he was on his side. So there is physics in this game. You can roll your tanks and things like that. And I think he got stuck on his side. So there it is. I didn't do the greatest. I mean, we did win. Um, I only did 99 damage. Our top guy did 271. Um, but I got 3,845 credits from that match. So I debated a little bit about whether or not to post anything from World of Tanks because I'm really not that good at it. Um, you can look at some of my stats. I've only got a 45% win rate. Uh, average damage per battle is kind of low, but I'm, I'm still playing at fairly low tiers. Um... And if you look at some of the other ratings, I'm really not a not a really good player, but I'm getting better at it, and it's a game that I enjoy. So, so I remembered something that I said in one of my very first videos, and that was, I may not be doing everything the best way, or I'm not an expert at very much or any of this, but I'm playing for the fun of it. So that's kind of why I decided to post that. Plus, a couple of my friends said they wanted to see some gameplay. So. There it is, and I'll probably be posting some more along the way. So anyways, this is Stonewall signing off. I'll see you in another video.